Hey everyone, Dr. Sheikh here from The Dentalist. Today we'll talk about an important topic in dental materials, steel and wrought alloys. Steel plays a major role in dentistry from orthodontic wires to cutting instruments and understanding its properties is key to using it effectively. We'll cover the composition and structure of steel, its different phases, heat treatment, and its applications in dentistry. We'll also discuss wrought alloys and why they are essential in specific clinical applications. Let's get started. So let's start with the basics first. What is steel? Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon, with the carbon content usually ranging between 0.02% to 2.1%. The properties of steel are largely influenced by its carbon content and the presence of other alloying elements like chromium, nickel, and molybdenum. But steel isn't just a single structure. It exists in different phases depending on the temperature and composition. Let's understand it further. So the phases of steel are ferrite, which is also called as alpha iron, and it is a soft ductile phase with low carbon solubility, maximum 0.02% carbon. It's stable at room temperature. The next phase is austenite phase, which is also called as gamma iron, and it is a phase-centered cubic structure that can dissolve more carbon up to 2% and forms at high temperatures. The next phase is cementide, which is ferric carbon, a hard brittle iron carbide that increases strength but decreases ductility. And then the next phase is martensite phase, which is a supersaturated solid solution of carbon in iron formed by rapid cooling, which is also called as quenching. It is very hard and brittle. So why do these phases matter? Because the properties of steel are controlled by which phase is present and how we manipulate them. This is where heat treatment comes in. Heat treatment is used to modify the mechanical properties of steel by controlling its phase transformations. This is crucial in dentistry for achieving the right balance of strength, flexibility, and hardness. Now there are different types of heat treatment. Uh, the first one that we could talk about is annealing, which is heating steel to a high temperature and cooling it slowly to make it softer, uh, more ductile, and stress-free. Another type of heat treatment is quenching, which is basically rapid cooling, usually in water or oil, to form martensite, which makes the steel very hard but brittle. And then another type of heat treatment is tempering, which is reheating the quenched steel at a lower temperature to reduce brittleness while maintaining strength. Another type of heat treatment is work hardening, which is basically strain hardening, strengthening steel through plastic deformation, often used in orthodontic wires. So here's a diagram of heat treatment cycle that shows different phases formed during heating and cooling you could appreciate each phase in this diagram. Moving on, let's talk about stainless steel in dentistry. Stainless steel is a type of steel with at least 12% chromium, which forms a passive oxide layer that makes it corrosion resistant. This is extremely useful in dentistry, where instruments need to withstand sterilization and exposure to oral fluids. Now let's look at the key properties of stainless steel. The first one is high corrosion resistance due to the chromium oxide layer. It gives it good strength and toughness. And then there is biocompatibility um, that favors the use of it in implants and orthodontics. Now the most common dental applications of stainless steel are orthodontic wires that is used for braces due to their flexibility and strength. And then the use of stainless steel in endodontic files and reamers, which is used for root canal shaping. And of course, surgical instruments, uh, scalers, forceps, and retractors, and whatnot. And then the preformed stainless steel crowns that we use for pedodontic purposes, that is used for restoring primary teeth. Now let's talk about wrought alloys. What makes them so special? 
The term rot simply means that the alloy has been mechanically worked, forged, rolled, or drawn into shape. Unlike cast alloys, which are poured into molds, wrought alloys undergo plastic deformation to refine their grain structure, improving the strength and ductility. So why do we use wrought alloys? Well, they have better mechanical properties than cast alloys due to their refined grain structure. They are more resistant to fracture under repeated loading, and they're used in applications where flexibility and toughness are required. Now let's look at some examples of wrought alloys in dentistry. Stainless steel wires that are used in orthodontics were arch wires, ligature wires, and retainers. Titanium wrought alloys used for dental implants and prosthetics due to high strength and biocompatibility. Then there's nickel titanium alloys used in endodontic um, files, the files that we call nitai files, and orthodontic wires, the wires that we call nitai wires, right? They're famous for their super elasticity. All right, let's talk about limitations and considerations now. Even though stainless steel and wrought alloys are widely used, they have some limitations. The first limitation is nickel sensitivity. Some patients may have allergic reactions to nickel containing stainless steel. Alternative nickel free alloys are available. The next limitation that I want you guys to know is brittleness in martensitic steel. If steel is over hardened, it becomes too brittle and may fracture under load. Then there's work hardening limits. While strain hardening improves strength, excessive work hardening can make material too difficult to adjust clinically. This is why selecting the right steel or wrought alloy for the right application is essential. Now that you understand the phases of steel, you would understand where each phase of steel is relevant, right? So uh, to summarize, today we covered um, the different phases of steel and their role in determining the properties. Yeah, and then how heat treatment affects steel's strength and hardness and then why stainless steel is ideal for dentistry due to the corrosion resistant property what what alloys are and why they offer superior mechanical properties the common applications in orthodontics endodontics and surgery and then understanding these principles will definitely help you appreciate why certain materials are used in dentistry and how they influence the clinical performance of a dentist. Now, like always, I have prepared a special quiz on this topic for you guys. So just make sure that you find that link in the description and take that quiz. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover any specific dental materials topic next. See you in the next one. Take care till we meet again.